Hi everyone, Cynthia here. Steve asked me to do another video, and this one's going to be about my experience at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, which was my first ever hi-fi show that I've ever been to. And it was so much fun. It was at the Marriott Tech Center in Denver, Colorado. And this hotel was huge. One side of the hotel had five stories, and the other side of the hotel had a tower with 11 separate stories aside from those other five stories. So there were a lot of rooms at this hotel and you can just imagine how many exhibitors were there exhibiting their audio equipment. So it, it was pretty amazing. And just thinking about how much time and effort they must have taken just to move all of that um, hotel stuff out of there and get all of the manufacturer's equipment in must have taken a great deal of, of time and effort. So that, that's pretty cool. Uh, so, being that this was my first hi-fi show, I didn't really know what to expect. And when I got there, I learned quickly that hotel rooms sound a lot different than the room in your house where you're used to listening to audio. And so that, that is one of the main things that I've learned, is that when hi-fi uh, equipment is being showcased in different hotel rooms, it, it's going to sound way different because the hotel room acoustics are not always the best. Sometimes the room might have good acoustics, other times you might come across a room that doesn't. It might have too boomy of a bass, or it may just sound like it's too closed off. And it, it, that's what you're gonna get when you, when you listen to high-end audio in a hotel room, rather than actually listening to it in a natural setting. But you just have to go in there expecting that and know what you're looking for. And you can kind of, um, you can kind of sift through the sound to understand what it is that, that you're listening to when it comes to that particular equipment and be able to tell the difference on what is occurring in that room versus what is occurring with the equipment and that sound. So that, that was pretty interesting and that was an eye opener to me because I didn't expect that. Uh, some of the best sounds that I heard were the Magnapan 3.7 eyes. I had never seen those in person or heard them in person. I've heard the uh, 1.7 eyes, which I own, the 30.7s and the 3.3s, which my friend owns, but never the 3.7 eyes. So it was, it was pretty amazing getting to listen to those. They're very large though, but they sound really, really good. Uh, I got to listen to the Zoo Audio Dirty Weekend speakers, and I have never heard a speaker like that before. They're just completely different than anything I've ever heard. They're so much fun to listen to. The sound just pops, like it's three-dimensional. And I got to talk to Sean Casey, and um, he, he explained the technical side of his, his speaker design, and it had something to do with motorcycle exhaust and engineering so that was that was kind of interesting but uh, he, he was a pretty cool guy I like to listen to him and I was actually on a panel with him called the Young Gun Panels Young, Young Guns and Hi-Fi and you can find that on the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest YouTube channel if you'd like to view that it basically talks about how we can get younger people into high-end audio and some of the issues and solutions to that uh, it also featured uh, Ivana Manley with Manly Labs and EJ Sermento from Wire for Sound and Steve moderated it so it, it was pretty a pretty interesting experience and it was definitely an eye-opener a lot of the questions and, and stuff that we we got to answer so uh, something else that I heard that I really liked I heard the NOLA Grand Reference sorry, Metro Grand Reference Gold II speakers. And those just imaged so beautifully. It, it just was amazing how those speakers sounded. And, and they definitely disappeared in that room. They, they somehow seemed to get a good hotel room um, that, had, that had pretty good acoustics as well. So that wasn't an issue either. But those speakers were just really, really, really amazing. I, I, I liked them a lot. Uh, I also heard the Sigma acoustic speakers. Now, I, I couldn't tell you what model they were. I don't know. But these speakers had such depth 
And the reason why is because these speakers extended back quite a distance. And so they played a song that, that was just meant for these speakers. It was called Celestial Echo by Malia. And you would hear different things in this song be an image in the speaker like it was going back and forth towards the back and towards the front and it just sounded it just sounded like it was there it was really um, it sounded real and it is something that I've never heard before in a speaker so that was pretty interesting to hear that uh, so those are some of the best speakers I heard one of my favorite turntables at this event was the Holbo, that's H-O-L-B-O, air bearing linear tracking turntable. I got to that room very last, um, at the very last of the show on Sunday, and it was recommended to me by a friend of mine in Tulsa who was also at the show. He said, hey, there's a linear tracking turntable, and I really think that linear tracking turntables are cool. Now there's arguments, uh, you know, linear tracking turntables versus pivotal turntables and which one's better. I thought this one imaged really well and it had a moving coil cartridge. I couldn't tell you the name of it. It was like a $2,500 cartridge. It, crazy expensive, at least for me. Uh, the turntable itself was $7,500 and it just, it was um, a work of art. So those are some of the best sounds I heard. Some of the people that I met, uh, I got to shadow with Alan Sircom and Chris Martins from Hi5 Plus Magazine. It's a UK-based magazine, and that was a really cool experience. I got to meet the whole crew. So Alan Sircom, Chris Martins, I got to meet Tom and his wife, Julia, and I got to meet Eric Neff, and they are just they're really down-to-earth people. There's so much fun to hang out with, and I, I enjoyed that immensely. And getting to go and actually see what they do at these hi-fi shows, they are so busy because they have to go room to room to room, and they have to be able to see every room, or at least try to see every room. And they, they divide up their, their duties as far as, like, one of them will take loudspeakers above a certain price, one will take loudspeakers below a certain price, one will go for personal audio just so they can get it all done. And then, you know, what goes into the decision making for what makes the cut, it, it's just crazy. And just everything that they have to do towards the end of the show, it seems kind of like your audio speed dating because you're having to go through all these rooms and make sure that you're not missing that one room that could be the hidden treasure of the whole show. So it, it's uh, the, the, the reviewing and journalism side is, is pretty interesting and I, I was fascinated by that. Uh, I also met Julie Mullins who is in love with vinyl just as much as I am. Uh, she was a really cool person to talk to. I met Misha from Stereo Pravda. He's a Russian distributor for Magnapan. And I met George, the lawyer. He, he's part of an audio council, and he was a lot of fun to talk to, just a really lively person. Um, I, I met a lot of people, and I met a lot of showgoers as well. And the showgoers were interesting as well because they, they are the ones who are the customers. And so going as a customer versus going as a reviewer or a, a journalist versus going as a manufacturer, they're, they're gonna be different experience in all three things, different experiences in all three areas, depending on what you're doing. A lot of the manufacturers don't even get to see most of the show so because they have to stick to their post. But then the customers, they get to see it all. And then the reviewers, they get to see it all, but you're seeing it in a different light going as a customer versus you know, shadowing, or what is, which is what I did with the reviewers. Um, so I, I got to kind of see all sides of it, and it, it's, um, it was a really good experience. Uh, one thing that I noticed is that each room displayed kind of a, a battleground, sort of, because each room had a different element, and in high-end audio, it's always like a battleground between 
analog versus digital, tube versus solid state, uh, panel speakers versus cone speakers, and, and don't even get me started on cables, we're not even gonna talk about that. But it's like each room displayed an element of, of one of those things. And you know, another one is linear tracking turntables versus pivotal turntables. So you can make arguments for either one of those um, options on each one of those debates. But what you need to do is make sure that you are able to sift through the weeds and find what you like, because ultimately it's gonna come down to what you like most of all. And well, let's just say I'm an analog tube panel speaker vinyl loving type of gal. So, oh, one more thing before I go. I wanted to mention that there is a company that was selling Chinese music at this audio event. They're called Raimua. And I really love their music. I bought a ton of it. I bought like three LPs and some CDs. And um, they're 180 gram vinyl, great recordings. And they're just really beautiful. A lot of it is vocals and harp. Uh, a Chinese instrument called the pipa, which is kind of like a, a very large lute. And so this is some of the stuff I got. They also have world music. So just music from all over the world. If you're into that, I, I know that um, a lot of people are, and I really like music from all around the world. So that that's why I got it. And this is a... Um, this is all cello here that's really pretty. And more Chinese music, Latin music. So uh, check them out. They're, they're a really good company. I really liked what I heard and, and was really impressed. And this is Cynthia signing out. Thank you for watching.